everyone, Voodoo here, and welcome to my 10.1.5 raid DPS tier list. Uh, I did a Mythic Plus one that came out Wednesday, so there's a link somewhere here in the description or on the screen somewhere to go check that out. Uh, but here's the raid one. So before we begin, hit the sub button, hit the like button. We're climbing on subs, hopefully to hit 10K by the end of the year. And in terms of likes, they've been great. Hit the like button, helps spread the video to more people, really help me out. Now we're here with Raid. So again, it's gonna be from more towards Mythic focused. Um, anything can do whatever you want on Heroic. And again, a little bit of a prio to things that are useful on the last few fights. You'll see that when it comes up when I mention it. A little rundown of the tiers. S tier are those specs that are doing an absolute blast in this raid. You'll see them on top of the meters almost all the time. They bring very useful utility, very strong things, and are just almost a necessity to have in your raid. A tier are really strong damage profiles. Maybe not the absolute best, but they're very powerful, or they bring really good utility. B tier means they bring one thing that they're very, very good at, or they have one almost indispensable utility. T tier means they bring something that's like pretty useful, but they have a lot of weaknesses that honestly weigh them down a bit. And D tier means there's not a ton of upside. They are certainly strong in the right hands, but generally speaking, it is best to shy away from these. And again, you know, honestly, the best player is probably better than picking a specific spec. Um, bring your players, not the spec. Use these tier lists to inform decisions, not make your decisions, all that kind of thing. Uh, your better players will perform better. You can have the best player in the world on a D tier spec uh, versus like a average or below average player on an S tier spec. And the better player will most likely win in most scenarios. So keep that in mind as you go through these. Uh, with any tier list, it's the best to look at that. But with that out of the way, let's get into it. So after I'm gonna put up an A tier, Aff has been pretty strong for most of this tier. They've gotten some buffs recently to make them a little bit better in terms of not relying as much on Dread Touch, I believe it was, um, making it easier to swap their uh, Disable Affliction around. Uh, Aff was seeing some play on Sark uh, before these changes in 10.1.5. And I believe with these changes in 10.1.5, uh, Aff is going to see even more play in the future. Uh, it's very, very strong, very, very good, and I do think it's a great uh, spec in general. Loses a bit because I think Demonology is so strong, but on things like Sark, I definitely think Affliction is the play and can do a ton of damage. We're going to put Arcane in B tier. So I'm putting Arcane down here because I generally think the other two Mage specs are actually better now than they were. Um, Arcane is really strong in the raid, does a ton of burst damage, and has really good timings on Sarkarath. Um, but I think in general that the other two Mage specs have just gained more than Arcane have, and has bumped Arcane down a bit. If you like Arcane, then play Arcane. But in general, I do think it's a little bit worse than the other two mage specs, which is kind of leaving it to this lower uh, ranking. Next up is Arms Warrior. Arms is probably the better of the DPS specs warrior right now. Uh, Fury can do some good things in like cleave and stuff, but I do think Arms is single target is a little bit better. And on two target, like on fights on Sark, cleaving down the big ad, or on uh, Echo, cleaving down the voice from beyonds or whatever, the ads in P2. I think you can definitely have some situations there where that's useful. The Immortal Strike effect is also very useful on a few different bosses, uh, namely Sarkareth for adds, or um, that second boss there, Assault of the Scully. Again, though, that's an early boss, who really cares? Uh, overall, arms are strong, warrior is strong. You want one buff, but their damage isn't anything crazy to give them a higher ranking. Assassination Rogue, we're gonna put down in D tier. I just don't think they bring enough damage. Now, I will say um, classes lower on the list uh, are generally underplayed compared to classes higher up the list, so they will be underrepresented because the better players aren't playing them. But I do think if you're playing Rogue, I don't think Ass is the way to go. Their damage is just a little bit subpar compared to some of the other specs. Now, they can do well. They're very good uh, two minute classes with um, Deathmark and being buffed by Augie Voker. And they're also good if you have to run away from the boss often. But I think in general, there are other specs that definitely do better, um, namely sub uh, for Rogue, and, and would be better to bring your buff with. Speaking of buffs, Augmentation Evoker is going to slot into A tier. Uh, it's kind of hard to get the full picture of what an Augmentation Evoker brings to your raid, because all the best specs to buff, which you'll see later, uh, don't fully contribute their damage to the Augmentation Evoker. I think Augmentation is incredibly powerful and adds a ton of damage to your raid. I don't think it's as oppressive as it is in Mythic Plus, uh, where it's just absolutely bonkers. You kind of need one in any high push key, but it does bring a lot. It has a ton of utility. Uh, it can give healers more movement. It can give a lot of HP increase, movement speed increase to people around you. It does a lot of damage. Uh, versatility is useful too on your prime targets. Generally, you'll end up buffing your best players or the highest burst specs and giving them that burst to also help them live a bit while getting your buffs. 
uh, is definitely useful and something that people might look over. On top of that, they're just unkillable. They have so much utility in defensives. Og is a very good spec. I think is uh, honestly, a, like they nailed it out of the park with a very first introduction of a buff based spec. Uh, Beast Mastery Hunter, I'm just gonna put that on C tier. They're not insane. The thing with Beast Mastery is they don't really bring anything, right? All they do is their damage. If you're bringing a Hunter, you're bringing it because it's one of your better players. Or for some reason, you need a spec that can move wherever you want it to, whenever you want it to, and you don't have any other options. Beast Mastery Hunter just doesn't bring anything super unique compared to some of the other specs. Uh, I do think Hunter needs to be looked at a bit. Their damage overall across the board is pretty low. Uh, and just in general, they don't really bring enough to a raid to, to warrant like having a slot. There's no buffs or something like that. So I do think Hunter needs to be looked at a bit, but overall we're gonna stick BM in the C tier. Even though I'm just going S tier, uh, they just have insane burst. They had really strong burst before. They're one of the best augmentation of over targets. And of course that damage is not being fully attributed to the AUG, so it is inflating them a bit. But even before augmentation came out, they just have crazy, crazy strong burst damage every minute and a half with their Tyrant, with um, the Radius Fragment every three minutes, with Nether Portal every three minutes, um, with the Clash Trinket, which is really strong as well. So uh, Demo is just really, really good. And I will happily swap them up in S tier. I think Destruction is strong as well, but I'm going to put them down in B tier for a few reasons. Destruction is really good um, because of that two target cleave whenever you need it. I will be interested to see if Destruction does better than Demo um, due to two minute Infernal. I could see that happening if you get more casts of Infernal out in the encounter. I could see it moving up. Uh, but in general, I do think Demonology is the play for some of those later fights. Um, and if you're not playing it, you're playing uh, something like Affliction on the final boss. They are strong, don't get me wrong, but I do think that there's a little bit worse than the other two counterparts um, of their spec. Devastation is going to go up in A tier. They just have really strong burst damage. Uh, they're really mobile as well. Really strong single target damage. Their ability to cleave is very good as well with Pyre, with uh, Eternity Surge, with Flame Breath, all that stuff. And they're pretty tanky as well. They bring um, uh, two defensives. They have one that's like a heal over time, and they also bring a one minute and a half, 30 percent defensive with two charges which is just really really tanky so overall uh, i think they're very very strong and do deserve a high ranking elemental shaman has also been doing really well recently uh, if you check out warcraft logs and things you can see them ranking pretty highly on damage meters they bring pretty strong single target uh, and also pretty good ability to deal with add waves on burst uh, something like on sarkarath you can see them perform pretty well they're also decent buff targets for augmentation evoker and they're really tanky so for those reasons, they do belong up in A tier. The damage is just there. I will say if the damage falls a bit, you could see them just plummet back down to earth for a few reasons. One of those is that they don't really bring any utility. Unlike their counterparts, unlike other specs in this game, they themselves have no utility compared to like raid buffs or something like that. So their spot is definitely based more on damage, but their damage is there this patch and we can see them doing very well. Speaking of damage, Enhancement Shaman is also up there. Enhancement received a buff, uh, I think it was like 6% or something going into this patch. That has skyrocketed them on uh, just what they're doing. So they're they're one of those cleave machines that do absolute insane numbers to any period of time where there's adds. But with this recent change, they also do a lot more single target damage as well now. Enhancement also brings Wind Fury Totem, which while isn't like the best defense, uh, utility in the world, it is solid enough. Couple that with a strong kick, which is very useful for some fights, as well as lots of defensiveness, and I can see Enhancement Shaman being a very strong spec for this raid. Next up we have Feral, put Feral in B tier. Now the Druid spec as a whole is very solid because you want that buff, um, but in terms of what Feral brings, it's nothing too crazy. They're kind of middle of the pack in everything. Um, the Nature's Vigil was nerfed, which is like their main healing thing. Uh, and in general, their single target's not amazing. Their burst AoE is not amazing. Those are kind of the best two things for this raid. So I'll put them down in B tier for now. I think that's a solid spot to fit them in. Fire Mage's S tier, the rework to them was crazy. Uh, they did get a nerf, and I'm actually a little unsure how this nerf will affect them in single target raid settings. You can definitely see it dropping down a bit, but it was like a 5% nerf, I think, overall. Um, most of the other nerfs were to AoE, but in general, uh, they are still very powerful for raid. Uh, them getting ca cauterized baseline as well makes them an incredibly strong progression spec because they actually have their cheat death baseline. On top of that, they also get things like Ice Block or a 70% defense of one or the other that full heals them which is kind of a crazy defensive. Uh, if you ask me, that's like really, really powerful. And they get a few other things of utility here and there. Overall, I do think mages in general are very powerful and pretty sure fire is still the best of them. We will see. I definitely don't know how the buffs, uh, sorry, the nerfs will interact with them too well, uh, but I'm pretty sure they're still a very strong S tier spec. 
I'm going Frost in B tier, and this is a bit of a tentative one. Um, Frost has been doing really well on some of the later bosses in like pure single target settings. Um, also, you know, Unholy is just very powerful. In those scenarios, uh, when you have high uptime with Frost DK, they definitely can do well. But on other bosses, they definitely they are also dipping down. Um, things like Sark, though, they're absolutely blowing it out of the water. So I think I might be under ranking these. I think Frost DK might be more of an A tier spec. Um, but we'll remain to be seen how they do over the next few weeks. Frost is also a very good augmentation evoker buff spec as well. It's important to keep in mind, uh, and their damage profile is really well-rounded in terms of single target uh, with some burst AoE. Um, but again, I'm unsure on this one. This might just be a little bit of um, smoke and mirrors, so we'll leave them in B tier for now. We'll see if they move up later. Uh, Frost Mage A tier, very strong single target. They're a two-minute class now um, with their revamped Icy Vange. They have Glacial Spike again. They have a Ray of Frost. Um, this is a really powerful single target damage profile. They're still more of a flatter profile, uh, less bursty, which definitely does matter, uh, which definitely slops them down in the A tier, but their damage overall is really strong. Two ice blocks can be super powerful, uh, and they're just really, really good just in general. Fury Warrior will be in C tier. Now, Fury at the start of the tier was hyped up to do a lot of damage, and that just hasn't fully materialized. You'll see arms often beat it on Warcraft logs and things like that. And the damage it provides with like spread cleave, sorry, the uh, stacked five target cleave constantly isn't super valuable in this raid. It's very good in certain situations, um, like Sark. But otherwise, you'll often see Arms Warrior doing better than them. It's not to say they're bad, um, but I do think overall they just fall a little bit short of some of the other specs on this tree. Havoc wouldn't be tier. I could argue, you could argue Havoc's an A tier because of their um, brand, but overall I do think their damage is just a bit lower compared to some of the other things. Havoc is one of the highest simming classes right now, but they don't often hit that due to like RNG and uptime things and, and stuff like that. Um, the buffs to them definitely saved the spec a lot. Their damage is much, much better than it used to be and very competitive. And they bring really strong effects like an AoE Immortal Strike on the last boss, which is one of the only ones you can bring. Uh, it's very powerful dealing with the adds. They're very good at like burst damage uh, on adds, things like that with I beam uh, Death Sweep, stuff like that. But I think overall their damage uh, is just a little bit lower. They're very uptime reliant, which definitely can cause them to sink down. They do have a very high skill ceiling. Um, and are very prone to mistakes because of fell rushing around and stuff like that. I think overall, if you, if you have a good Havoc and you can get a lot out of your Havoc Demon Hunter, they definitely could look like an A tier spec. But I think on average, uh, just due to the, the problems they have with needing really high uptime, as well as just bringing um, not like the most amazing damage, they have very good damage of course, but it's just not being super realistic. Um, does bring them down to B tier, Brand is powerful, Darkness can be powerful, but we'll leave them in B tier for now. Again, you definitely could argue this for A tier, I think if you combine their damage, which is actually pretty solid now with their utility, but I think we'll leave them down in B tier for now. Mark's Hunter will put in B tier as well. Um, just strong damage, really. They have a two-minute cooldown that bursts really well. They have AoE, uh, basically whatever you want with things like Explosive Shot or Volley. Um, they can save that for like ad waves on things like the last two bosses, which is very important. Um, overall, though, again, they're a Hunter. They don't bring too much, so damage is the only thing they have going for them, and they're just out DPS by lots of the other specs above them, so there you go. We've been going B tier as well. Its damage, again, is just a bit subpar. Uh, it does bring the verse buff that Feral and other things bring, um, but it's also a range, which is definitely a bonus. But overall, its damage is just less than things on top of it. Uh, there's nothing really this tier where Starfall can really take advantage of like a massive like spread cleave things. Uh, most cleave in this fight, um, the last two fights are pretty stacked on top of each other, so you don't really get a lot of value out of that. And on top of that, there's actually times where the Starfall Cleave can end up just killing your raid if your Boomy pushes it when there's mind control people out on Echo. Uh, that's gonna be a bad time for you. So I think Boomy definitely can have some situations to shine. Single targets, nothing insane. Um, Starfall is really their big uh, drawing point, and there's not just not a ton of fights this tier for them to take fully advantage of that. How long put in D tier, their damage just isn't there. Um, they can do okay, and like I say okay on things like Sarkareth because they can just cleave the whole time. But they're not bringing in a ton. Their damage is just really subpar. They don't bring a lot. I do think Outlaw Rogue and Assassination Rogue, just rogues in general, do need that 10.2 rework to really be brought back in the forefront of things. Um, it's just definitely a disappointing spec, and I would recommend playing the other rogue spec sub instead. Red Paladin goes C tier. I think Red Paladin is just not as good in range as it is in Mythic Plus. Uh, definitely fallen a bit from last tier. Uh, they're more like versatility based, which means they don't scale too well with stats. And on top of that, their single target damage just isn't anything crazy. Now they do bring, of course, Ret Aura, which is strong. And if you have a good Ret player, they can do very well and they're very tanky. Uh, Sanctified Plates is insane. 
But I think overall, uh, their, their real strength is like burst AoE damage, which isn't really needed this tier um, on all the fights where it exists. It's more of a pad thing than anything. Um, so definitely could have situations where it's strong, but uh, certainly overall, it's not one of the better specs. Shadow Priest is next up into the A tier. Shadow Priest is really strong. Uh, just in general bringing pi is crazy and their damage is really good um on fights where they can dot a lot of targets they can bring that 20 second aoe damage ramp um with kind of like their spirit link or not spirit link psychic link cleave i think it'd be very powerful and very strong they're tanky in raids they have things like fade every like 15 seconds 10 seconds very short cooldown um they can vamp heal themselves with their shields they can Dispersion, which is a very strong defensive. Uh, dispersion is basically going to let you live most mechanics that hit you. Uh, and then, um, you know, they can also just play Dwarf and they can also just have Desperate Prayer. So they're tanky, they bring solid damage and PI, which is just a really crazy button. Allows them to hit that uh, A tier ranking. Now, Survival is one of those ones where it's really hard to get a good read on it because most players that play Survival, um, you know, there aren't a lot of top end guilds that have those Survival Hunters. So it's really hard to get a grip on what survival's maximum potential actually is. If you're looking just at logs and stuff, survival is a D tier spec. I think overall though, it is most likely to be a higher tier spec than that, something in like C or B, just based on single target damage. But because it's so underrepresented in the meta, I'm definitely gonna put it down in D tier for now. I don't think it's as bad as I'm ranking it, I do think it is a better spec overall. We're just not seeing a lot of players play it, which is really hard to get a good grip on what the spec can do. The same is true for like things like uh, Assassination Rogue and Outlaw uh, Rogue. There's not a lot of players playing it right now, so it's a lot harder to get an idea of what the spec does um, compared to some of the other specs, maybe towards the top of the list. Sub Rogue will be our Rogue spec in B. They just bring a lot better damage than the other two Rogue specs, and they are your best way of bringing in Tropic Poison, in my opinion, anyways. Um, sub has really good single target damage and really good burst AoE damage, as well as good funnel, which can be useful on things like um, Echo of Naltharian, who just have a Sub Rogue just pumping into the boss using a Shuriken Storm to eviscerate the boss. Um, definitely can help with your boss damage on uh, fights like that. If you leave your other specs, you just cleave down the adds. Um, they also bring just really good defensiveness. They have Cloak, which is a really strong immunity. They have Faint. Um, so overall, Rogue is pretty tanky and pretty strong, um, just in terms of like defensiveness, survivability, and Sub is the Rogue spec that actually brings that damage. So if we're not in B tier, I think it's fair to put them there. Interesting to see how the rework, uh, the rework will end up with them. Unholy Gold S tier, Unholy has just insane burst damage, and that's just really useful. On the last two fights, they're one of the best specs you're going to end up having, just doing that insane single target damage, pounding the boss and just getting it down. Um, they're also specs that work the best with Augmentation Evoker. Again, they're not giving their full damage attribution to Aug Evoker, but specs that burst that hard are going to be the best Aug specs for you. On a fight like Sarkarath as well, they can have that haste bonus every time they have their CDs, causing them to do even more crazy damage. So I think in general on Holy DK right now, just with how much raw single target damage they can output, they're going to be very strong. Not to mention they're tanky uh, and they also bring anti-magic zone, which is just really powerful. Finally, Windwalker Monk's gonna be in C tier. I think Brewmaster is an amazing way to bring the buff this tier. Uh, Windwalker can be strong as well. Uh, sorry, uh, Mistweaver can be strong as well, which definitely pushed Windwalker down. Uh, their single target damage is never what they're known for, uh, unless you have that weird bug where you just stack a bunch of Windwalkers and whatever. Um, they can do good burst AoE to, to adds, but again, it's not better than a lot of the other specs. Um, they're tanky, but in the end of the day, their single target definitely brings them down. Now they can do really good burst, and if you get your hands on a great Windwalker, they can be a great asset for you. But in general, um, you know they're kind of relying on like beacon crits and cheese and stuff like that. Uh, and their burst damage, while strong with, with Tiger, uh, is not crazy compared to a lot of the other specs. And their single target is just really subpar. And I do think there are better ways to bring a monk buff, which definitely puts them down lower on the tier. So that is going to be my raid tier list for 10.1.5. The reworks and augmentation invoker have shaken things up a little bit, um, but in general, uh, the raid is meta is pretty much solved. It's a little bit different from the keystone meta. Um, I think a lot of these specs are really powerful, even if they're ranked a little bit lower on the list. It's just gonna be based on what you know the raid needs, what the same specific uh, raid fights can, uh, require. On top of that, of course, bring in the player and not the spec. It's really important on every tier list you see to not just blindly follow the tier list. Take them as a way to inform your decision, not make your decision uh anyways that's gonna be it for this video surprise weekend video i guess and i hope you guys are enjoying this patch 10.1.5 has been pretty fun for me in general hope you guys have a great weekend so i'll catch you guys next time and make sure you hit the like button make sure you subscribe and uh peace a big thank you to all of my channel members who help support me and make videos like this possible thank you to one to one pain 
Joshua O'Connell, Brad Wisniak, Zulgan, James, Evandro Faraz, It's Bulk, Flatex67, and Angelo. A big shout out to all of you. You guys are such a big help to supporting the channel. If you want to support the channel and help make, make bigger and better videos, then become a channel member with the link below. There's a little link in the description. You get to become a channel member. You get a ton of cool perks, including some emotes to use in live chats and comments. You get a shout out in my videos. You get access to an exclusive uh, part of the Discord, the Voodoo Discord server, and also access to things such as vod and log review so again big thank you to all you people uh could not be doing this without you guys big big shout out and i will see you guys next time thank you for watching the video peace